Also tonight, crime in major Democratic-run cities like New York continues to spiral way out of control, while Democratic leaders like failing far-left New York Governor Kathy Hochul continues to coddle these violent criminals. Devastating consequences. Remember, billion dollars in cuts to the NYPD, no bail laws all, all over New York. You might recall yesterday we showed you this video of a man going on an axe rampage inside a McDonald's, and the suspect was promptly released on bail. A guy swinging an axe at McDonald's like that. And by the way, he's back on the street. Remember the case of Jose Alba over the summer, who was charged for defending his bodega when the guy came around the counter and attacked. Attacked him. And by the way, a violent encounter ensued. And then the DA charged the victim in this particular case that had the, every right to defend himself. But anyway, we have these far too often, we see these far left leaders turning villains into victims, victims into villains, and it is now causing a collapse inside our major cities. Now, in New York, Lee Zeldin is vowing to protect victims and refund the police, reduce crime, increase the quality of life for working Americans across the state of New York. Are Americans fed up with all the crime? Are New Yorkers fed up with all the crime? What's interesting is opponent, Governor Kathy Hochul, who took over for Andrew Cuomo, doesn't even want to debate, like most Democratic candidates this election cycle. And a poll released earlier this month shows Lee Zelda now within the margin of error in deep blue New York. Here with reaction, New York Republican gubernatorial candidate Lee Zeldin. First, the crime is that bad. It is out of control. They're releasing people that are committing violent crimes. We see it again and again. We can show a lot of tape if people want. Um, why is it the governor has steadfastly refused to rescind these no bail laws? Why is it that they're not refunding the NYPD instead of defunding it? She's weak in pandering to far left pro criminal allies in her own party. When I was calling for a repeal of cashless bail, she was saying that there wasn't any data to support it. Essentially, her position is that you have to elect her to find out what her position on changing cashless bail might be in January. When I was pledging to fire Alvin Bragg as soon as I get sworn into office, she said he just got there, cut him some slack, he's doing his job. You mentioned the Jose Alba case. I was standing in front of Bragg's office calling on the murder charges to get dropped, and when she was asked about it the same day, she says it's a local matter, she's not going to get involved. Uh, you know, meanwhile, when she was making this move after the Supreme Court overturned New York's unconstitutional concealed carry law, she was asked just a couple days before her new law passed, well, what data do you have to target concealed carry permit holders, and she says she doesn't need data. She's the governor. And everyone wow. woke up in the state legislature that Friday morning, and there was no bill by that afternoon. There was a bill signing. So she's been all wrong on crime, and I believe that New Yorkers of all walks of life, you don't all have right. to be a Republican. Everybody wants safe streets. Here's the, the, if there's one problem I see that you have, it's that so many people have left the state of New York because of crime, uh, quality of life issues, high taxes, burdensome regulation that might have otherwise been very willing to vote for a Republican. So demographically, it's tough, especially in New York City. But yet you're within the margin of error. Is it possible for a Republican to win the governorship in New York? Sean, I'm not in this race to come in second. You know the stakes. Uh, there are a lot of New Yorkers hitting their breaking point. New York leads the entire nation in population loss because people have their wallet, their safety, their freedom, the quality of their kids' education under attack, and they know that if they go elsewhere that their money will go further, they'll feel safer, they'll live life freer. So I believe that there are New Yorkers of all walks of life, and we've seen it from people who might have always voted Democrat in their life. We see what the Hispanic vote has now changed from November 2020 to now, and others. They're ready to come our way, but we have to work for it, taking nothing for granted all in. Well, the rest of the state in the last election went pretty red. The only part that is really blue is New York City. We'll see what happens, but you're definitely in the fight, and we really are going to watch this closely. Uh, Lee Zeldin, thanks for being with us. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.